Well, welcome back to Cottage Farm Sid. I'm Rebecca. And as you probably know from a previous video, we are expecting baby chicks to hatch this weekend. Unlike the chicks that we impulse bought three weeks ago, we have planned for these, so we have everything on hand. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you how easy it is to set up a brooder box for baby chicks. First up, as the name brooder box implies, you need some sort of container. Uh, other than the times that I've let uh, broody hens raise their own chicks, this is the Rubbermaid tote that I have used for all my other batches of chicks. It fits probably about six comfortably. With this new batch, we're not sure how many we're anticipating, maybe seven, eight, nine. So they'll be comfortable in here for a few weeks while we wait on the older chicks to feather out and move them outside. So this is gonna get used once again. So inside your brooder box, you're gonna want some sort of bedding. So this is gonna serve two purposes. First, it's going to absorb all of the poop that's gonna be coming out of your baby chicks and help keep the smell down. Second, chicks need some sort of traction, especially in a slick Rubbermaid tote. Uh, otherwise, they can have issues with their leg conformation and it's called splay leg. But if you have bedding in there, you won't have to worry about that. Our preferred bedding is pine shavings. We get this from our local feed and seed store. Uh, you can get it from Tractor Supply. The one thing you wanna make sure is you don't get cedar shavings. While we humans love the aroma of cedar, chickens and most birds have very sensitive respiratory systems, so it's a bit much for them. So we stick with pine shavings. So we usually start with about an inch and a half to two inches of pine shavings in the bottom. And we found that's a good place to start. It's thick enough where the chicks won't slide around on the base there. And then we also will add a thin layer of pine shavings every day on top of their poop. This serves two purposes. It helps to keep the odor down from the chicks, especially since these are going to be living in our living room with us. It also eliminates having to clean out the brooder box as frequently. So it's a little bit like the deep mulch method um, for bedding. We put a thin layer on top over the course of the week. And so we get down to cleaning our brooder box out just once a week, which is a big time saver. The next step for baby chicks is they need some sort of heat source. They don't have their feathers yet, so they're not able to regulate their body temperature like a mature bird can outside. So there are quite a few options available for keeping your baby chicks warm. We just happen to still have the original heat lamp that I got for my first batch of chicks and it still works great. You will notice in here that I do not have the traditional red light bulb that you usually see at the feed stores. This is a regular 60 watt incandescent light bulb. And I'll tell you why I use this. When I first started raising my baby chicks, I was following all the advice in the books and blogs of how they needed to be kept at like 90 degrees temperature. I had a thermometer in there. I had my heat lamp with the traditional red bulb. And then I started noticing after a day that my ch baby chicks were panting and they were so hot. They were frying in there. And I realized that they didn't necessarily need as much heat as I was giving them. So I asked my dad, my grandfather was a hobby farmer. And I was like, what did my granddaddy do for heat for baby chicks? And he told me that he just used a 60 watt light bulb and that was all that he used to keep his baby chicks warm. So I gave it a try and it worked great. My chicks stopped panting and they had plenty of heat to stay warm, especially since we were raising them inside of our house. The ambient temperature of our home is already about 70 degrees. So this just boosts it a little bit. Another thing I noticed when letting broody hens raise baby chicks is that the baby chicks are not constantly under their mother maintaining a 95 degree temperature environment. They go in and out all day. And even when the temperature is in like the 60s, they've been fine. So I realized it wasn't necessarily that I had to maintain like a, the perfect ideal temperature to keep a chick alive. I just had to provide a spot that they could warm up. So what I do with the 60 watt bulbs, since this does not get as hot as a heat lamp, is I set it up in the corner of my brooder box so that there is a hot area of the brooder box. And there's also a cool side to my brooder box. So the baby chicks can choose which side they need to be on to regulate their body temperature. And I don't have fried chicks like I did the first time. So next up, baby chicks need water. And so we get these bases at a feed and seed store. I think this one came from Tractor Supply. I've seen them on Amazon. I can link them below. And they fit on top of a regular mouth mason jar, which is super convenient because we have a lot of those on hand. So I can just rotate through them and keep them clean. And we'll just fill up our water jar here. And we screw it on like this. And then when you're ready to put it in the brooder box, you flip it over and the water pours out. 
you will probably have to clean it out more frequently than you need to refill it necessarily. Baby chicks learn to scratch around very quickly and so they're gonna fling uh, all sorts of pine shavings and their poop and pieces of feed in here and it's gonna get pretty messy. So we clean it out at least twice a day and if we are here, we'll clean it out probably about three times a day, especially when they get larger and they're really flinging the pine shavings around as they're learning how to dust bathe. Well, next up is food for the baby chicks. And similar to the waterers, they sell these little feeder bases that attach to mason jars at your local feed and seed store. Tax supply, and I'll link to below to some that are online. As far as what type of feed to choose, you're gonna wanna look for something that says chick starter on it, as it's gonna be formulated for the nutritional needs of a growing baby chick. And it won't have, say, the calcium that a layer hen is gonna have or the protein of a more mature meat bird is gonna need. It is specifically for the baby chicks. And usually on the back of the bag, it'll have up to how many weeks of age that the chicks should be eating the chick starter. So it's pretty simple. Each brand has their different recommendations. So just take a look at the back of the label. Another thing that you'll notice when you're looking for starter feed for baby chicks is you'll see medicated versus unmedicated. So medicated feed just has some medication in it that helps prevent cachitis, which is when baby chicks get the runs. So for us personally, I like using medicated feed if I am raising them in a brooder box inside as I tend to have more cachitis issues. Um, but this, since this round of chicks we have a goslin, it cannot have the same medication as the baby chicks in the same quantity. So we're using regular starter grower feed and this was formulated for all types of poultry so it's perfect for us so we don't have to worry about nutritional deficiencies for our chicks or our goslin. For this next round of chicks we are probably going to use a bag of medicated feed since we are not going to have a goslin in there as it does help them get off to a decent start at least in our experience. I like the waterer it's fed for upside down so you just flip it over like that and screw it in. So if you are not planning on spoiling your chicks with treats or greens from outside or any bugs or worms that you may find. This is actually all you need for your baby chicks. They just need food, water, clean bedding, and some heat. However, if you do want to spoil your baby chicks a little bit with say some corn grits or some greens from outside or finding an earthworm for them, you will need one more ingredient in your brooder box. And you will need chick grit. The chick grit is just little pieces of rocks, like little pieces of gravel um, that you can see there. Chickens have what's called a gizzard, and that is how they grind up their food since they don't have teeth. So they'll eat the little rocks, get it in their gizzard, and it'll grind up the food in there. Chick starter feed is small enough that they don't have to grind it up in their gizzard. Um, but if you're wanting to feed them like corn grits, which is something that we like feeding our baby chicks so that they get used to being handled a little bit, or if you want to grab some greens or grass or chickweed from outside, um, or the joys of an earthworm, you will need to have some chick grit on hand. I typically sprinkle a little bit of it on the top of their feed each time I feed them so that it's right there. Some people will like to do it free choice and they'll have a little dish in there with the grit for them to peck out. But I find just putting a little bit in their feed every day is enough for them. And this bag of grit has lasted me a really long time. This is my original chick grit. I'm getting down there. But just that little bit of sprinkle once a day is enough grit to keep them going. Well, I hope you found this video helpful on how to get set up with baby chicks and show you how easy it is really to get set up for them. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money or be super fancy. It can be something as simple as a Rubbermaid tote and a few small and expensive supplies from your local feed store. If this is your first time getting baby chicks, I will link below to a blog post we wrote uh, a couple years ago about how to prepare for baby chicks. And I will also link to a checklist to make sure that you have all the supplies on hand. But we'll see you next time with our newly hatched baby chicks.